What is going on my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. We are in Japan. This is going to be the first episode of our Asia season of Fragbox TV. It starts off in lovely, lovely Tokyo. I can't wait to do this, guys. First time in Asia and I was so excited to shoot this stuff. I'm going to do an intro video kind of giving you guys my first time in Tokyo experience. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the culture and the food and just getting to know the city before we go meet my friend Vlad. Vlad owns a store just like mine in Tokyo, selling saltwater corals. He's probably got one of the nicest shops I've ever been to in the world. Vlad also happens to be one of the nicest guys in the world. We had never met before this trip. We communicated through email and he took three days off of his busy life to basically just show us the best Tokyo had to offer. So Vlad, if you're watching, I just wanted to say thank you, buddy, and we really appreciated it. Our trip starts trying to get from the airport to our hotel, and I don't think any Tokyo trip is complete without getting lost on the subway. So we quickly went and checked that right off our list and got lost. But it didn't really matter because it's such a cool city, so we just wandered the streets trying to find our hotel. And then we gave up and found our taxi and met our first Japanese person. And people there are really, really polite. We soon realized it wasn't just the cab driver that was really nice. Everyone is really nice. It's just a culture of respect and kindness. And we also noticed right away, it's super clean. I mean, you cannot find garbage on the streets anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Even if you try, you're not going to find it. It's actually almost creepy how clean it is. Like, you can eat off the streets there. Even the drivers are just super respectful. You don't honk, there's no cutting people off. It's a total culture of respect, and I really liked it. So, with nothing to do with our first night and accidentally booking our hotel in the red light district, my friend Patrick and I go out for a night on the town to start off our Tokyo trip right. There is food everywhere. I mean, we literally cannot stop eating. So we just go bar hopping. Another beer, another piece of food. Another beer, another restaurant. The city is really, really alive. It's like 1 a.m., but it feels almost like the Japanese version of New York. Like, it's busy. So we stumble across these awesome street performers. And I can show you some shots of Tokyo and let them do the work. My favorite part on this trip to Tokyo was the food. I'm a huge foodie. And boy, did we eat. I definitely put on weight over these three days. The sushi, oh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. It was all sushi and it was incredible. And it was so nice being there with a local because he took us to the best spots. So if you're a foodie, I would really recommend visiting Tokyo. You will not be disappointed. There's so many cool flavors and the freshness of the food is like something I've never experienced. The fish, the fruits, everything, the vegetables, the tempura. It was, yeah, by far my favorite part. I mean, just look at these strawberries. What, they're not, they don't even look real. The food quality is something else. I'm also into knives, so I had a, was able to pick up a new knife from Japan for cooking, so that was pretty cool. It was like one of the only souvenirs that I brought home with me. And the times that we weren't with Vlad, who speaks Japanese, people were really nice to us. Obviously, I don't speak Japanese, or not obvious, but we got around town just fine because they're really friendly and willing to help when you get lost, and you do not need to speak Japanese to go to Japan. I was a little bit worried about the language barrier, but because of the respectfulness of the people and me just being a goof and pointing at stuff, that worked out just fine. I've been to a lot of cities all over the world and Tokyo is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever visited. Um, 
it's it's stunning like i'm really into architecture and buildings and this city did not disappoint it's also weird it's it's a cool mix of new and old around every corner you don't know if you're going to stumble across like a beautiful shrine like this or it's it's just a mishmash of everything it sort of felt like a dream and it, weird weird but also cool and beautiful at the same time and every single corner was like a new adventure you didn't know what you were going to run into lots of really cool and funky bars which i didn't expect at all with just strange themes that were a lot a lot of fun you can go to a cat cafe and have a latte with a cat or if that's not for you maybe you can go to an owl cafe and have a cappuccino and pet some owls it's such a cool place maybe a maid cafe and get served by a cute little japanese maid which is a very Japanese thing to do. I like that you didn't need reservations for anything. You just walked around and you went to whatever you found. It was very different than North American kind of structure and society and the, the buildings were, were really, really something else. We had a lot of fun most nights just walking around. We didn't have a itinerary or plan. It's, it was very much just go with the flow. The Sky Tree was a really cool tower. I think it's the biggest in the world, if not one of the biggest. And it just gave us awesome views of the entire city and we nailed it because we got there just for sunset so we got the coolest coolest red glow coming down over all of tokyo which is pretty neat and it's big i didn't realize tokyo is like 14 million people Tokyo is also one of the most naturally beautiful cities i've ever visited like the natural beauty is just well this is a back alley we're walking down like the fact that there's no garbage really helps but it's just serene. There's lemon trees all over the place. It's very peaceful and strange because it's busy but peaceful. There's these crows everywhere with these signs, like these large killer crows. So wherever you go in the city, you're constantly hearing like, caca, caca. It's, a, it's a sort of a weird effect. Um, I love anime and I've always like romanticized Japanese culture. And there's always these crows in the cartoons and now I think I see why. But walking through parks, felt, again, very much dreamlike. Lots of koi everywhere. There's um, just a, a peacefulness kind of around the city. You see a lot of people in these traditional dresses and they have fun and I had fun asking them if I could take videos of them. This is walking through another park and then you just get lost in the beauty of the city. It was kind of cold when we went. It was um, now February and it was a little chilly. It was a little, little cold. I would have been cool to visit when you didn't need hats and gloves on. Lots of shrines, lots of places to stop and pray. Very spiritual. Um, I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but I, I love this city and I would go back to Tokyo in a heartbeat and actually cannot wait to visit again. The thing I noticed about walking around the city is everything is smaller and narrower, like this garbage truck or vans and cars. Everything is like tiny fire trucks and police cars and you see a lot of cars that we don't have even this crane everything is just mini and narrow um, something about me i'm a huge car nut like anything that takes gasoline and moves fast i'm into it and this city is just crazy i mean it's the birthplace of come on honda you have subaru mitsubishi toyota um mazda like huge i'm talking the world's biggest car names this is the birthplace nissan this is where they came from lexus the list goes on and on i'm missing a lot but you see a lot of high-end italian cars too which was cool lamborghinis um, ferraris maseratis all over the city lots of money and they customize their cars in tokyo like something i've never seen before to each their own i wouldn't do it if i drove a car like this but they bedazzled the shit out of them like they really you know that that's john's pink lamborghini there's no confusing that yellow pikachu like the way they customize is something else and it's very common it's not just one you see it on lots of cars like this volvo it's just a weird but very cool car culture that i'd never experienced before and being a car nut man i was just like a kid in a candy store you see the old like this you see the new and everything in between i did not expect to see so many cool whips just around the city lots of money you'll see uh, a phantom or maybe a limo maybach that i didn't even know was a thing and i'm sure is around a million bucks little sleeper cars like this around every corner huge motorcycle culture too lots of cool bike shops um suzuki another name man i know i'm missing a lot 
I love, love, love seeing the old school cars though, and awesome, awesome experience. Wrap up the video just talking about Japanese people. We got interviewed by a TV station, which was kind of cool. They stopped us, asked what we we're doing in Tokyo. People there are just so nice. They're so thoughtful. They're so respectful. They're so considerate. Um, I just found like peace. And they're so helpful. They will literally go out of their way to help you.、Um, the humility, they're, they're about orderliness. And my friend Vlad, that we met there, was telling us part of this is because、uh, lack of personal space. He was pretty cool.、Um, there's 125 million people you know, living on a little island. So you have to be respectful. Stay tuned because in the next episode, we're going to go to Vlad's place. Coral Aquatic in Tokyo, where he sells saltwater corals, and we're going to do a whole video review of his store. It's probably one of the best videos I've ever shot here on Fragbox TV, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Again, can't say enough thanks to Vlad for taking the time out of his day, not even day, three days, to show us around Tokyo and just be an awesome new friend. Thanks for coming along for the journey, guys, and stay tuned for the next episode of Fragbox TV Asia Season 1, our first season. Appreciate it. Bye bye for now.